Stephanie Rubiano and I'm here today to share with you my excitement over a couple of products that Retro Cafe Art Gallery is carrying now that I think dovetail just splendidly. It's a match made in heaven and what I'm referring to is inkjet shrink plastic and the little shrine box ornaments. I'm going to turn this so you can see. The great thing about this shrink plastic is it gives the detail is just amazing as it shrinks down and then you have this dimensionality that you can build up in these little boxes that have an acrylic panel that fit in that seal up and just there are so many things I think that you can do with these as you can see ostensibly it is Valentine's Day is coming up so these are Valentine themed but you could do any sort of holiday or whatever color scheme or interest that you have very easily the shrink plastic you can print on any image that is what you want to work with. So I did Valentine's Day this time. I also did this one like a shaker card. I put some German glass glitter in there for a little extra kinetic fun. But let me zoom out a bit and I'll show you the products that I am referring to. So this is the shrink film that's made by Graphics Arts Plastic. And you want to make sure and get the one that says inkjet and that it's the white opaque white. Um, I've done some things with the clear but the white's what I like and this is what Kristen is now carrying at Retro Cafe Art so this is what we recommend. And then she has a multitude of the different shrine shadow box shrine kits and they can you can use them as an ornament or even this could be a locket a piece of jewelry they have a little hanger built in so clever or you can get ones without a hanger and this would just be a fun little piece to set upon a shelf somewhere a little mini installation of art if you will so the fact that you can print and shrink down anything that you like and fit into these tiny little shrine boxes I'm just like I said I'm really excited about it so I thought I would do just a little walkthrough of some techniques that I did to create these little pieces and hopefully encourage you to give some of this a try on your own. So I will be right back. All right, so each kit, as most of you probably know if you've worked with any of Kristen's products before, are just really fabulous in terms of the way that they are cut out and structured. For these little shrine kits, you have a backing piece, then two central pieces with the masonite, and a top wood piece for the front and then your acrylic piece is the one that's covered with paper and it's going to fit down right into that little setted area that's not a word set into that area it's got a little ledge so it won't fall through and what I like to do is well let me back up first you need to have some imagery um, these are sheets that I make that I sell in my Etsy store Stephanie Rubiano and they've already been prepped for shrink plastic to be printed on shrink plastic. The color has been adjusted because when this plastic shrinks, the color in intensify. And so if you don't brighten and lighten them a bit, they, they end up really dark, especially on these really tiny pieces. So as you can see, what, where did I set her down? Things wander away. Wow. As you can see on, on this, probably to get this one that's this size, started out maybe about this size. They shrink about half. So you want to print your images on the shrink plastic. It's coated on both sides so you don't have to worry about being on the wrong side. And you want to, I just use a nice sharp small pair of scissors. Cut them out. Do your best not to touch the imagery because it is ink on plastic and the heat and moisture from your hands can actually affect it. It's like any inkjet printout really but you want to cut those out carefully, shrink them at, I use a toaster oven set at 325 and it'll take maybe a minute or so, they'll curl up, you'll flip out, then they'll settle out and you'll calm down and that's when you pull them out after they've flattened again completely. So once they have been shrunk, then you have these great little um, plastic pieces, they're very sturdy, the color on here is set, it doesn't really come off. However, you do want to seal these with a matte finish sealer. I, I like matte finish. You could use a glossy if you prefer. But I like the matte finish. The texture is kind of bumpy, but I don't find that off-pitting. I like it. But as you can see, things get pretty tiny around here. 
So for this piece, I wanted to use this little girl and a set of wings, so she's going to be my little Valentine fairy. And what I'm not a big painter. Paint, paint freaks me out for some reason. I love old paper though. So what I have done on, on these, on the back piece, is use some old vintage papers that I collect. For instance, here I have some old prescriptions. You could use any thin, I wouldn't use a heavy thick paper like um, scrapbooking paper because you are going to be stacking these and you want them to fit together pretty well. So I would use a thinner paper if possible. And all I'm going to do is take my back piece, make sure there's no gunk on it, which is entirely possible. Things sit around here. And you can hold this up to the window or um, another light source and kind of get an, get an idea of where your piece is if you want to, your writing to go a certain way. So I'm going to kind of hold up here real quick, get it centered. And the way that I put the paper on, I want to have a reference point and you'll see why in a moment. So if I can have one edge that can line up, you can either carefully tear it if it's old paper or cut it if it's not old paper. Let's see if it might. This is this paper from the early 1900s, so it's kind of wanting to. But now when I go to adhere my paper, I have an edge that I know where that paper is going to go because what I like to do, you could certainly use an adhesive like um, I use the neutral pH adhesive by Lineco, but sometimes with these thinner papers, even though this is made for book binding and tends not to wrinkle as badly, you can still get some wrinkling. So I found if you use a spray adhesive, an all-purpose spray adhesive, works a lot better, goes a little more quickly. But all I'm going to do is spray the back of this paper and to make your life a little more easy, if you want to kind of trim out so you don't have a whole lot of excess, that would probably be a good thing as well, like so. So I'm going to spray this and be right back and then clear my area because I'm going to have to place this fairly quickly. All right, so I'm going to find that edge again. Hopefully get close to where I was. It's always more difficult when you all are watching. I might have oversprayed just a bit in terms of, um, I've got some kind of showing through here, but that doesn't really bother me. It kind of adds to the age of the piece. Probably wouldn't hurt to have some wax paper under this. Let's grab some. Just because there is some adhesive on this paper, I don't want to stick it down to my table. Okay, now the easy way, you could take an X-Acto blade and come and trim this off or use your scissors, but to get a nice clean edge, what I like to do is take some 220 grit sandpaper. It has enough grit that it will take the paper off but not be too harsh on your edges. And you're going to sand down and away from the edge. Now you have a nicely covered backing and you could easily paint this on the back, but I'm going to slap some more paper on it. So hopefully this paper is big enough. Same as before. I did spray this with a little of the matte finish acrylic sealer just because it was in pencil and sometimes if you press or your um, burnishing your paper, it can smudge the, the pencil, so I think I might have to cut this one this time. It seems like it's not as... So you just cut along that crease. 
again, kind of cutting off my excess. All right, I'm gonna spray this now, or spray the, sorry, spray the paper, and I put things down in glue. <laughs> Look at that, my scissors. Oh, yeah, that's, that's how I roll, peeps. And there's a paper towel. <laughs> Try and set everything up perfectly for video and then reality sets in. So let's move that up out of the way and try again. Spraying my paper. I just gave it a nice even coat. You have a little bit of work time, not a whole lot, so don't spray it and then go up and watch your favorite soap opera or something it needs to be done within 30 seconds or so. And sometimes it's better if you wait for it to dry just a tad. All right, there we go. So now you have a nice backing. Like this. All right, so then I just kind of to check out and see where I'm at when I start putting my pieces in. This girl did originally have legs and I cut them off so she would kind of seat down into there. Let me zoom in just a little bit. And I think I want to use these wings. So when I am adhering my little plastic people together or using them, stick them in things, I like to use the Ultimate by Crafter's Pick. This is my all-time favorite adhesive. It's a water-based super glue. It's really fabulous. It has a lot of um, body to it. And doesn't take much, which is a nice thing when you're working so small. Again, like I said, probably a little bit more. Um, these have been sealed with the acrylic sealer because what can happen if you don't seal them, that ink can still in interact with moisture. And so if you're using this adhesive and you got it on a part that was going to show, then your ink would turn different colors and not be as pretty as you originally had hoped it would be. So we want to avoid that at all possibility. Yeah, I think it's better putting it on the wing. I love tiny things, but working with tiny things can be a trial sometimes, but totally worth it in the end. If you can have um, a brush ready to go to pick up the excess adhesive, that's another good thing. Sounding very Martha Stewart here. And try not to have adhesive on the rest of your fingers like I'm doing, because then it travels around. So there, she's looking pretty good. And because she has these wings braced like she does, that will be the part that kind of lifts her off the back. So again, you get that dimension. Now, do we want her to have a little heart? Everybody should have a little heart. Let's see. I have a couple of little hearts here. Now you do want to keep in mind that this is going to fit down. You have to make sure that it's not so tall that your acrylic won't fit in there. So kind of keep an eye on things. See if you can turn, if you can see. It needs to be 
she needs to be lower than this little ledge right right here. And I just put adhesive in the middle there again. You'll see when you start to fiddle with it, but just that's something to keep in mind. You don't want to build something too tall, too tall here in the center. Otherwise you won't be able to shut your shrine. So I think we have enough room to give her a little heart. Not cat hair. And sometimes you may need to get your tweezers out. And I keep putting my hand in my adhesive. Like so. Double check, I still think she's just not wanting to get in her spot. Turning her sideways, and I think she's still good. The glass, the glass, the acrylic might be right there, but I think she shall fit. And now, if you wanted to, like for instance, on this one, I put "Be still," as in "Be still, my heart." Put little words up there. Might be a nice little addition. Um, it's also another thing that Retro Cafe Gallery carries is the Dresden, and I was thinking, I think it's. Um, she's too tall on this one, but I had some little pieces. I had one cut out. I try and prep for these videos, but you could easily cut a little piece of Dresden and make a crown. That would be something that would be kind of fun. Again, cat hair. All right, let me see if I have some words. Just a moment. All right, I found um, this little heartfelt, which I know is one word, but let me see, I might. I might break it in two. Sometimes I just kind of sit and play around with the composition of the piece until it Feels right. You know, I think I kind of like it. It's kind of a odd little bit there. So again, let me, it's kind of keeping these on helps me make sure everything ends up in the right place. So we'll put a little adhesive on the back of the heart felt. All right, now um, something I was thinking about after I removed her legs is she has a little bit of a space down here that kind of bugs me. So what I think I want to do is once I get everything um, Kind of assembled. I'm going to do something like I did here with the German glass glitter, but I'm going to use these little pearl beads. And so I think I'm going to kind of fill up that space and all. But I think my next step. Now, this is something too that you can do. I, most of the time when I'm building these shrines, I like to have the inside dark, it kind of leaving that masonite, that dark brown. It's a nice neutral color and to me it kind of offsets that space and lends depth. You can certainly paint the inside of these. Um, one thing I did do on this Be Mine piece is I, I did want a little pop of red, it just needed something. So I did do a little painting even though I said I don't like doing it. And where you would do that would be this level here. I have my, this piece has a hanger, so I have my hanger piece 
then this piece, this is the narrow little ledge that's going to show underneath your, your top wood piece. So if you wanted to put any color along this ledge, this is where you would do it and you would do it now. So let's do it now because I'm going to show you if it doesn't work out, then we kind of have a, something we can do. Um, again, I don't, I'm not big on painting, so I'm just going to make, I'm using, I like these Martha Stewart craft satin paints and that color's pretty, pretty similar. And I'm just going to And I'm not too worried about getting paint. I don't want to get any paint on the edges of this. So kind of pull back from that edge, but I don't worry about it getting on this edge because I have something I'm going to do on the outside that's going to make that not a big deal if I get any paint on that edge. And maybe you're screaming at me. There's an easier way to do it, but this is so how I did the other one, this is how I'm doing this one. Checking to see if I get any. That's probably going to need another coat, so I'm gonna let that dry. Okay, I, while you were away, I didn't, bet you didn't know that you left. I added another coat of the tartan red to brighten it up a bit because on this masonite, that one coat was just too dark. Um, you could also spray paint these, that would give a nice, light, even coat. I find that smooth things like this are sometimes hard to paint, but those are my ways that I deal with it. So the next thing that I wanna do, and this again is just how I work and how I build these, I want to use the ultimate and go ahead and stick these pieces together so they're all one unit as I kind of work on a final assembly here. So, it doesn't take much, make sure I have this correct. And I was gonna say also on this, say you painted it red and you were like, eh, I just really don't like that. Well, you can just flip it over if you wanna keep it with the dark brown or you know, paint over it again. Again, you don't wanna to get too thick on these layers, but those are just some thoughts. And I don't want a whole lot of this to smudge out the sides, so I'm doing many dots, but kind of small dots. Hoping that my paint is dry. And I want to make sure, I mean, there is going to be some bits that come out. They don't stick out too badly. It's lined up pretty well. Okay, so once I have this stacked and pretty well, I don't want to have a whole lot of, again, excess adhesive, especially on this little 
ledge, so clean that up if you can. But now, oops. Now you have a nice little hint of red around the inside edge. So I'm going to come back and go ahead and adhere that whole stack to my back piece. Oh, and I don't know if you noticed, I realized that I had put the heart felt on the piece that I intended for the back. I liked the pin that was on the on this piece, so now we have heart strings because there was no way I was getting that off. And I noticed that I didn't get quite enough, wow, a lot of adhesive didn't quite make it. So I'll just come and fix that. easy enough. All right, I guess check to see that all seems to be stuck down pretty well. Again, clean up any little bits of adhesive that might have smudged out. Now sometimes, whoops. To be really, really sure that it's all good to go, I might dry this under a weight for a little bit. But like I said, this adhesive holds up or sets up pretty quickly, so I think I'm in good shape. But if you ever want to do that, you can do that. I have done it. And now ready to put her in. Like I said, she um, she's got her wings that'll kind of put her up from the back. But if you ever need to make little shims, what you can do is I will save, when I'm cutting out shrink plastic, I'll save the little white pieces that ordinarily would get thrown away. And I cut them up and shrink them. And then I have little pieces of plastic that I can use to change the level of the pieces in my little assemblage. So just a little note there. Again, it doesn't take much and I'm not too worried about adhesive showing she's going in a make sure and kind of press right here over her wings where the adhesive is and she kind of seats down in there Now I could easily um, stop there and be done, but I, I like to fiddle with things. I like to add things to my collages. So like I said, I was going to, or I am going to add these little beads and I thought maybe to pull some of that white up into this area up here, maybe use a, a white gel pen and make some marks. So maybe to echo, and I know my hand's probably in the way of this. And actually I, you know, thinking of it now, should have done this before I put the uh, sorry I'm fiddling before I put my little walls on but I know just a little bit of white up there
Now, when I did this piece with the glass glitter, rookie mistake, I put some of the glitter in, or I put the glitter in, I thought my adhesive was dry, but it really wasn't. So I was doing a heck of a lot of banging, <laughs> trying to dislodge where they had stuck to areas that where the adhesive wasn't quite dry because I wanted to be able to, you know, move around and um, it was just you know, kind of a mess. So we're going to take a break and let everything in here dry before we put our little um, beads in there. They're not as critical as the glitter, which now I'm thinking about it. I can probably, I'm going to go ahead and do it with a messy brush. I want to cover that little bit down right in here. So I'm going to put quite a bit just to kind of fill that space. Let's see where that gets us. Again, want to be mindful that it's not up so high that your uh, see they're kind of sticking, but it's like I said, it's not as bad as the the glitter. They're big enough that I say that. Come on. There's one behind her neck stuck in the adhesive there. Yeah, good enough for government work, right? This one's a little high. She can kind of I'll put a little bit more adhesive. There. But there, that kind of covers that little area down in there. And I am going to put a little more adhesive. I wasn't going to do that, but now just a little bit more right here. All right, I'm going to let that sit and dry a bit. And then I'm going to put a few, whoops, there you are. Why'd you lean over so far? Um, I'm gonna let that sit and dry a bit and then put a few more in here so, we'll, we'll, so it will have that kind of movement. So while that's drying, I'm gonna clean up these beads and we'll be back in a moment. Now again, to finish the edges, you could very easily paint these. Um, on the pieces that don't have loops, I used paper in a similar fashion that we did, that we used for the back piece. You just, you know, tear, tear out a piece, glue it down, sand off the edges, and go all the way around. That becomes a little more problematic when you have this loop here. So one of my favorite things to do is to actually use metallic leaf and finish out this edge. So you want to use um, an adhesive that's made for that. I like the Duo by USA or US Art Quest. I always want to put an extra A in there. Um, I think Speedball makes the or Mona Lisa probably has a Mona Lisa on it. It's what I can remember right now, but it's the same thing. It's an adhesive that you put it on, and once it dries, it remains tacky, so that you can add your leaf to your project. So I have a piece of wax paper down. And hopefully this will, whoops, it's very watery. So it's not going to take a whole lot. 
I just have my paintbrush and it will look, I'll hold it like this, will look milky when you apply it and you'll know that it's ready to go once it turns clear. You'll see kind of a film, but you really want to kind of let it get into this wood. The wood's porous and so Sometimes it can soak in and you have a hard time getting your leaf to stick. But just kind of take your time. Maybe go over it now and again. Make sure and get to that edge. And I'm trying not to go over the back edge too much, but it won't bother me if I do. I like the it's funny, I have between perfection and imperfection. Some things it's okay if it's wonky. Other times it drives me nuts if it is, so it just depends on the situation. So now you see why I wasn't very concerned by having paint on this outer edge because I knew I was going to be covering over it with the leaf. where it gets a little tricky. You try and force it through the loop, get the back side of the loop, get the inside of it. And I've made it back around. Now I want to apply it around the top part. So I'm going to kind of work the brush out this way. Trying not to get too much down into. So I work so hard to get that red lip. And if you get some in there, it's you have to live with it because it's it's stuff. Even if you try and wipe it out, it's just going to be there. So accept it and move on. Oops. Gonna let that dry and like I said it'll go it's already looking pretty dry here on the sides it'll dry clear and that will mean that it's tacky and ready to be leafed so be back in just a moment okay so the adhesive is dry now and is slightly sticky so this is where we are going to bring in our metal leaf I'm going to use silver and as a somebody I know used to say this is when you turn off the ceiling fans, lock the, pet, the pets out of the room, and God forbid, don't sneeze. Is it stuff go everywhere? But all we're going to do is take pieces of the metallic leaf and unstick it from that. Start to put it down on the prepared surface. And I really enjoy doing this. I think it's a lot of fun. 
and you just kind of layer over back and forth I just as you can see pick up pieces here and there put it over little areas that are open because because if you've covered it well with your your adhesive then sorry thinking and you know, acting and talking is not always doesn't work out for me all the time <laughs> then you know no matter what size little piece you'll put down and it'll stick and even if you overlap it it's okay because that excess will just brush off so as you can see it <clears throat> probably end up with leafed fingers as well And theoretically, it shouldn't stick to any areas that don't have the adhesive, so you don't need to worry too much about it getting all over your little assemblage. Now, there is some adhesive on my waxed paper there is why that's getting stuck down. And I just cover it best, the best that I can in this first go around, and it's not going to look pretty. Gosh, my cats are going nuts. Stop it! Hey! So then you want to take a stiff bristle brush and just gently brush over the surface. And what this will do Well, kind of burnish down the leaf and take the excess off. So like I said, I got some around these back edges, but I kind of like the way that looks. So again, it doesn't bother me. So now I am going to, let's see. a brush and work the leaf into that area. I know it's looking like a hot mess right now but once you get it all all these flakes settled. And another thing I like about this this masonite wood it provides a nice how should we say kind of you know if there is some of it shining through it, it makes it look kind of antiqued or aged which I like now let's say that for whatever reason you had a spot that just the light the leaf didn't adhere to what you can do is take a little bit more of the adhesive and just brush it right over those spots let it dry and then come back and put your leaf down and it'll go right over that it's pretty magical little technique I think I'm happy with like I said the little bits that are exposed bother me too much. OK, 
Okay, I'm going to take this outside and give it a big blow all this off and be right back and clean this up too. So give me just a moment. So you can take a brush and get those last little bits of leaf. And again, this is probably one that you don't want to do the leafing until after you're pretty sure all of your adhesives are dry. So as you can see, that gives it just a really nice finish. I like the way the back looks. And I've got one little bit that's stuck. Yeah, I can feel a little bit of adhesive right there. Again, I'm not going to worry. I say that and now I'm trying that. I got it. Okay. So now, like I said earlier, I want to put a few more of these in so they'll move around a bit. It's kind of fun. Maybe like that. And let's see. Need a little bit. Adhesives, the final thing we're going to do is put our acrylic in. So you have the acrylic has the paper on both sides, which is always fun because it's been cut and that edge ends up being pretty much flush with acrylic once you get it started. Say that. And I do my best not to touch it. It's going to be pretty clean coming off out from under. So if you hold it by the edges Probably try an exacto knife as well. I would just worry about scratching the acrylic. And look, see, I've already got a piece of silver leaf on there. So, um, I was just about to dump that over. I I don't like putting the adhesive on the ledge. I actually kind of put it along the edges of the acrylic and then set it in. It's just, again, I don't want it getting all over the adhesive. So I'm going to try and just put some, this is a pretty tight fit. Hmm, that's interesting. <laughs> uh, I was trying to make. Once you pick it up, you don't want to set it down. A little thing to kind of hold this. You can already see a cat hair on there, too. <sighs> you get, you know, electrostatic and then spit. <sighs> it's just always something. Let's, let's, let's go ahead with the. Saying it doesn't take much. This does dry clear and yet you don't want a whole lot of it coming out the edges. I'm trying to see which side of the 
adhesive that I managed to <sighs> Okay, let's give this a try Because that stuck to it, of course Yikes. All right. Luckily that's on the outside. <clears throat> but that piece of mm, that piece of is not. See, you get to see that, you know, I have struggles too. Now, a little bit of paper towel. A little bit of adhesive that I managed to when it dries. Not. All in all, that looks pretty good. So yeah, now you have a little, little bit of a kinetic element with the little beads, kind of like those games when you were a kid to try and move it around, but there you go. I think she looks pretty cool. Uh, now a nice little ribbon and you have a lovely little valentine piece. As I mentioned before, it doesn't have to be all Valentines. They make, you know, other other shrine shapes. There's little TVs, there's squares, there's ovals, there's other little houses with different shapes cut out, but just a lot of fun. And I hope that these, this little tutorial gave you some ideas so you can run out and experiment with these awesome products. Be sure and post if you do make something. Kristen and I would both love to see it. And thanks for watching. Bye. Okay, I fibbed. I wasn't done. I wanted to show you one little trick. Sometimes with the acrylic, you can get kind of a static cling thing going on. So see how like that little bead right there is just sticking up. Sometimes if you take a dryer sheet and then sometimes if they have a residue, wipe off the residue. But that helps kind of get rid of the static. So you can ecstatically get your get your beads and your stuff to not stick to the front of your acrylic. Okay. This time I'm out of here. Have fun.